Hi, I'm Professor Angela Rasmussen from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Utah. And today I wanted to go over the BJT AC analysis. So the goal for this um, video is to understand the AC model for the BJT and what it looks like, and then be able to actually draw it in the circuit and understand the steps when you're going to be solving a circuit with a BJT when you have AC sources applied. So the first thing that we wanna look at is going back to the current flow through the BJT. If you remember this equation, um, IC was equal to ISE raised to the VBE over VT, where this VBE is a DC value. So when we apply, well, it can be a DC value and an AC value. So when we apply a DC and AC source, the current is actually going to be a summation of both of those, the DC value and the AC value. So using this um, IS equation, that becomes this, where we've added in both the DC and the AC values across VBE. So if you remember when you have E raised to the subscript and there an addition in there, that can is the same as a multiplication such as this. When we look at this portion right here, we notice that this is again back to the DC value of ICDC. And we can expand this E if you remember that property is approximately one plus X for when X is super small. So that is where this gets its name, the small signal, in that it needs to meet the requirement that VBE, which is the AC value across the, the base to emitter is a lot less than VT. Remember VT is your thermal voltage and at room temperature, that thermal voltage is approximately 25 millivolts. So that means that the AC portion of the voltage across the base to emitter needs to be less than 25 millivolts in order for this assumption and approximation to be correct. So if we expand that, this then becomes one plus VBE AC over VT. And we see we have a DC value here plus an AC value. And looking at this, if we put this into a variable called transconductance, this GM is because it's one over um, a resistance. Remember resistance I times R equals V. And if we have, in this case, we have I over V, and so it's one over R. The other um, thing that we notice from GM is that it is actually the slope of that nonlinear. If you remember the curve of IC versus VBE, And we take a curve and then take the derivative, which would be DIC, DVBE. That is going to give us the same value as this transconductance. So <coughs> this is going to be a variable that we can use in a model now for the AC portion. The other thing that's going to be a strong component of the model is the input resistance. So looking in at the base and looking at the base current, remember that the base current is related to the collector current by beta. And so if we go back and substitute in um, just the AC portion, that's going to be the ICDC over VT, but now we have beta. And so Remember that IBDC was the ICDC over beta, so this portion here is actually IBDC, and then we have it over VT. 
And again, this looks like Ohm's law, which means that we can use this parameter r pi that describes IB over VT. And we're going to use these two parameters, the GM and the r pi, to now create this model. So we know coming in at the base, we are going to have a resistance, r pi. And it's going to be connected between the base and the emitter. And then we have a current flow of the value of GM based on the voltage across that R pi from the collector to the emitter. RO goes back to the early effect, so make sure you go watch that video what the early effect is. And if it is going to be included in your model, then it will be the value of VA, that early voltage over IC from the DC value. So remember this was the early voltage. And again, that's something that's given to you. For hand analysis, we typically ignore. And then we let the simulator analyze that to give us the difference from what our hand analysis would be without it. And so you would see the effect. That's a much easier method than trying to use that to calculate. So the two equations that you need to memorize, the R pi equation and the GM equation, and notice that you can also relate R pi and GM through this relationship of R pi is equal to beta over GM. So these are the, the um, AC parameters. We need to understand their equations. And this is considered the AC model. And it's um, a small signal model. Again, remember what small signal means, that VBE, in this case, the voltage between VBE is V pi, has to be a lot less than that 25 millivolts. So another word you're gonna see for this is hybrid pi model. Another word that you're going to see for this is called the hybrid pi model. Now there are other models, um, and so that's why this one is the hybrid pi. So here's a summary of the steps. First we're going to determine the DC voltages and currents, and then make sure it's operating in active mode in order to utilize that small signal hybrid pi. Next, we're going to, if it is in that situation, then we can set all of the DC sources to zero and we leave in the AC sources. And then you're gonna redraw the circuit using that hybrid pi model. Calculate all the AC variables using those equations I said to memorize. So this is gonna be your GM and R pi. Plug them into the model Again, for hand analysis, you're gonna ignore RO. Then you're gonna solve that circuit with that drawn AC model for all the currents and voltages. If it's an amplifier, you can calculate the input, output, and gain, which is, remember, the output over the input. And this gain is valid during the circuit's operating region of frequencies. Remember, that is the flat region of that Bode plot. So you kind of need to know that Bode plot. And I'll show you later on how to actually draw the Bode plots for specific circuits. So in this circuit, we're gonna do a simple example to show and demonstrate these steps. So here would be our output, and I'm gonna call it VO. And you have to know where the output is, it needs to be told to you, and I'm, so I'm telling you that. We also know that beta is 100 for this circuit, and we see that we have two sources. There's a three volt DC, and this would be my AC signal. So for the DC analysis, we are going to remove this, which means that part will be zero. And we're going to label all the currents and then check that the currents and voltages satisfy the conditions for active. So assume active. And remember the next step after you assume it's active is that you're gonna take a loop from the base to emitter. 
And in this case, um, we know that that voltage drop across VBE is set to a voltage value of zero point volts. Remember, this is a DC value. This will not apply to the AC value, just the DC value. And that is the model we use for the DC part of this. Students get that confused, and so please be aware that that's a common mistake. That is only for the DC value. So our loop, if we go through this, I have a plus. This will be a minus and then a minus to get to zero. So plus three minus IB times 100K minus 0 0.7 equals zero. And I only have one unknown here. So IB is going to be um, 2.3 over 100K for a value of 20. 3 microamps and then we can get IC which is beta IB so 100 times that to give me a value of 2.3 milliamps and IE I can also get if I want which is going to be um, 23 micro over 101 beta plus one. So now we know the currents, we can find the voltages. Uh, we see here automatically VE is located here. VC is also the same value as VO and VB is located here. So for VB or VE, let's start with the easy one. We see it's easily zero volts. And that also means that VB is 0 0.7 volts. VC, which equals the DC value of the output, we call this is only for the DC portion, is gonna be 10 minus the IC um, times 3K. And that gives a value with the IC of 2.3 milli. That gives a value of 3.1 volts. So remember our check for the active mode is that VC is greater than or equal to VB and in this case 3.1 is greater than 0 0.7 and therefore it is on and active. So that is our DC solution. Now for AC I suggest for students just starting to draw this is to start with the hybrid pi itself. So draw the our pi resistor and the current source and then after you've drawn that figure out what is connected at each location so remember this is the base this location is your emitter and this location is your collector so for the the AC now we are going to um, we are going to look at the um, DC sources all get shorted. So in this case, that three volts goes to zero. We're gonna apply this source and the 10 volts also goes to zero. Any other voltage sources go to zero and any current sources get open up. So now I look at the node at the base, which is the same node here. And I see I have 100K connected to that AC source. So this will be my VN, AC, or VI. At my emitter side, I see it's only connected to ground. And at the collector side, it's a 3K connected to ground. So here goes 3K connected to ground. And then right at the, um, the collector node is where my output is located for the AC. So now I'm going to analyze this circuit and I notice that this is a dependent source and it is going to have force this current to be the same. So I need to know my values for R pi and G M. So to calculate those, remember that R pi 
is the IB DC over VT. Sorry, wrote that upside down. It's VT over IB DC. And so if we use the 25 milli over our DC value for IB, which is 23 microamps, this gives us an R pi of 1.09 kilo ohms. And GM can be found then by um, beta over R pi or remember it's also the IC value DC value over VT. So if we use the 2.3 milli over 25 milli, these values will give us the same, and it's 92 milli amp per volt is the value there. So now um, I'm going to talk about kind of since this is an amplifier, input and output resistance and gain. So since this is a very simple circuit, my output resistance will be the resistance that I see here. And my input resistance needs to be told to me. It can either be right at the input, so it would be this um, resistance from this node to ground, or 100K could be external to it. That is something that I would have to be told. But looking at this, I see that um, if I apply an external source short this source, my R pi will go to zero, or I mean my V pi will go to zero and therefore the source will open up and R out is just going to be 3K. So that would be my output value for R out. And R in is gonna be the 100 plus R pi. And that would be my value at the input, which is approximately 101 kilo ohms. And gain is going to be my output versus my input. So if I write an output equation, it would be a minus gm v pi times 3k. And then v pi I see is located right here. And that's a voltage divider with my input. So that would be vn. AC times R pi over 100K plus R pi. And plugging in all those values is going to give me a value of a minus 3.04 VIAC. And then to get the output over the input, I simply just divide on this side. And so that would give me a value of minus 3.04 as a gain for this amplifier. This concludes the solution for this simple um, circuit, doing both the DC and now adding on that AC analysis. Thank you for watching.